Royal Magnolias, two sisters who love family, traditions, and all things Southern. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. Hey, Lainey. Hi, Laura Beth. Well, <laughs> we are here. I'm already giggling. I know. We haven't even started. I know. We're just sisterly <laughs> like that. Hey, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our Facebook group. Um, yeah, that's looks like it's had great growth because because we just let a whole bunch of people in that were kind of stuck in a queue of Facebook madness. I feel so bad about that. Well, it's nothing that we could when do. It's fault, just a problem that anyway the group had. So anyway, welcome, welcome to those that are in the group. And if you are on Facebook and would like to join our group, please do that. You can just search for Steel Magnolias Podcast Group, and you'll have to answer maybe just three questions in order to be accepted into the group and that's really just so we can figure out how did you find us yeah we want to know these things and I think we usually ask if you have any topic suggestions as well so we'd love to have you if you enjoy being on Facebook now this was a topic was that was asked say. for right so By speaking of suggested topics this today's topic came from a couple of listeners and we may have mentioned it to each other before of this would be something worth considering because it's part of Southern culture for For sure. sure, Especially in, yeah. But yeah, it just affirmed it when we heard from a couple of you guys that you wanted to hear about Greek life. So I thought I should have brought like a solo cup to drink my my water out of for today's discussion. (laughs) But I did not. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And I'll even talk about an aspect of that if you want me to as we dive in. So I doubt this topic, Greek life and recruitment and all the things, I doubt this is something that any of our listeners right now are trying to decide. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's probably thinking we probably don't have any 18 year olds listening. If we do, you're welcome. And you're probably not on Facebook. So you probably don't want to join our Facebook group. You're probably on Instagram, but we're over there too. You're on Snapchat and Instagram. So you're on TikTok, which I'm not even, we'll see you on Instagram because we're not getting into Snapchat and TikTok just yet <laughs> but we may have some parents of 18 year olds absolutely listening to this that are going i don't even know what to begin to think about greek life in do the i South let Eastern. my kids do this do i not yeah maybe you had a good experience or a bad experience i'm kind of excited in that we have two different experiences you and i we do i think we're going to be able to create a really well-rounded discussion around this so and we've said before to you all we prepare for the recording but we don't talk about to each other what notes we have yeah so that makes it kind of fun so that it's truly organic conversation exactly so so i am non-greek and you are kappa delta yes okay so i being laura beth um so my my greek story is pretty short so i should I just go ahead it actually includes some pain for me too but so let's just so yeah I, I went to college at Western Kentucky. Yes. Um, and I pledged my freshman year. Um, I'll go into some details more later, but I pledged my freshman year, was very involved all four years of college, and moderately involved in some things after. Very little at this point in time. Okay. Still support what, you know, that. I had a great experience. Yes. But as far as like, I would, in all transparency, monetary stuff, don't so much into that. I kind of go more into more like Christian organizations and social justice kind of stuff more than the sorority. But I had a great experience. Yes. So you would still applaud your membership with Kappa Delta at Western Kentucky. Would, if I had had children... Um, at this point in time, I would say would probably try to steer a boy potentially away from fraternity rush or, well, we called it rush. Let's go ahead and go there. I think they say recruitment now. I was going to say we called it rush. Now we, okay. My experience was 20 years ago. Yours was 30, right? Yes. So these are dated experiences. However, the element that we're talking about being fraternities and sororities that are hundreds of years old have a lot of tradition 
which still in theory is supposed to be going on today so it may sound like this is old news but it's kind of not yeah so there's a recruitment process of gaining new members and i know for the fraternal organizations there tends to be more what they call hazing and drinking yes than there is in the sororities I'm not saying that the sorority girls don't drink. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But it's not a part of becoming a member. Right. It would actually be frowned upon. So frowned upon. And we had very um, active alumna involved in the whole recruitment process. I mean, there in person the whole time. Yeah. That wouldn't have even gone over. Right. Because they wouldn't allow us to do that. Right. So... Yeah, first I don't know. It, it may be different kind of at different schools. It may be different, but I know with with the fraternities, there's something about that peer pressure with boys that seems to be a little. And they just want to go bigger, and they want to have more adventure, and yeah. just continue to push the envelope. So yeah, so, I don't know. Well, I think in general that fraternities and sororities are bigger in the southeastern United States at our yes. at our universities and state schools and colleges. Um, I was trying to think of why. And the only thing I could come up with was tradition. Tradition I, I, in general is bigger in the South. And I think tradition breeds tradition. Yeah. And these sorts of groups were founded and exist on traditions. And the, yeah, and there's a lot of tradition in it, which is something I think is fun. Yeah. But there again, that could even be tradition could be good or bad, I guess, if you're holding on to. Well, that's true. Not good things. That's not good. Anyway, I, I agree that that's probably one of the main reasons. Just And I think the social aspect, the, yeah. um, I would say even, some people may not like that I say this, but I think that there's very much the, um, in a lot of social circles, kind of that who's who, who are you connected to? Absolutely. Um, who are your people, as we say here, who are your people, meaning like your family. Yeah. But in this sense, like it kind of associates you with a group. Yeah. And the other thing is families, I think, tend to push their children to go to the same school that they went to more in the South. Okay. I'm, I don't know I'm about that. I'm totally making a generalization that, on that one. But yeah, I can. So I, I think that just that. several generations of families at one particular school also kind of lend to, well, if you're going to go to Auburn, obviously you're going to go be in the fraternity that I, that was, I was in. I was in, right? Or this, yeah. Because yeah. you're a legacy, and we'll get into that. Yeah later as well so but anyway. I would even say in the south at certain schools it's more prevalent than others so I actually obviously didn't look up every single school in the south mm-hmm. but I looked up some of the larger state schools oh good I, d- I looked up two okay so, yeah. and did percentages of yes the undergraduates that are in a fraternity sorority so Alabama is known for huge Greek life yes and it's 35 percent of the undergraduates. Okay. So I actually, I mean, that's not, that's not much. A huge number. Um, Ole Miss is also known for a huge yes, it is. Greek influence. And it's by the numbers I looked up, maybe mm-hmm. I'm wrong if you have a different study somewhere, but 32%. Okay. Um, University of Tennessee. Did you look that one up? I did. I saw 22%. Okay. I saw 21. So somewhere so that's, in there. That's roughly 5,000 students just for context. Okay. 5,000 students that are undergraduates at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. So 21%. That's pretty low, I think. I think when I was there, again, 20 years ago, I think it was 40%. No. I'm not even kidding. I'm almost positive it was 40%. That sounds extremely high. Maybe it felt like 40% when you went to a football game. Because there is a good showing of Greek life there at football is. games. Yes. Um, okay. Other schools I looked up. Just grabbed a few and looked them up. Georgia and Georgia Tech, 25%. Okay. Clemson, 25%. Okay. Now, this was fascinating to me because everything's supposedly bigger in Texas. Oh. Texas and Texas A&M, Texas was 14%, Texas A&M 10%. Hmm. So of the population, that's not as important, I guess, there. Yeah. I yeah. mean, their numbers of in their schools huge. 
Yeah, so they may have more students. They probably have involved yeah, compared to these but other percentage schools. Percentage wise, yeah. Interesting. There's just a few numbers. Wow. Well, where do we go from here? Well, let's talk about the process okay. of recruitment. Okay. Which, I, if I say the word rush, that's what I'm referring to. That's what we called it, but it's now recruitment. Slip of the tongue. Um, potential new members, we called rushies. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what that's what called, called now, now. <laughs> um, but that's what we called them. Uh, and the process was basically like you're going formally through the um, university panhellenic organization which is over the fraternities and sororities i really only have this information for sororities so forgive me if your son's going through i don't really know what their process is but i think it's still formally through the university it is i started to i pretended to apply to a fraternity (laughs) at the university of mississippi which is old miss just so you know if we if we teeter-totter back and forth or actually we never say that anytime we say Ole Miss that's that's the the University University of Mississippi yeah Yeah. so um and that's what you're gonna hear in the south I don't ever hear it called that no I actually had I felt like I was um in like you know, had needed to be all secretive to be on a college website, like pretending and that's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Well, um, yeah. So you're going through this formal process where there's a fee mm-hmm. can vary school to school. Um, you're sending in an actual application, right? That typically includes a transcript of your grades because yeah. that's very important. Yeah. In these organizations, um, a photo. Yeah. At least for sorority. Again, yeah. not sure if the guys care, but the girls want yeah. to see a photo um and often you'll send in recommendation letters yeah from other um members who are alumni okay. now if they're active members at the school where they're you're going you don't do a rec form because they're going to be in se. the room when they're talking about you right and i was going to say that's a huge help if yeah. you have somebody actively in the room that knows you and can be your cheerleader. Yeah. Huge. Probably more important than rec forms. Yeah. Um, so that, and I printed out a Kappa Delta rec form just to refresh my memory. Cause I've done a handful of these for girls over the years. Okay. I didn't do one this year. So I reprinted it out, but they basically want to know, you know, how do you know this potential member? Um, how long have you known them? Do you know their family members? Um, you also put in, you know, because you would get it from the potential member, their grades and yeah, all of that. But they even want to know, like, personality and leadership qualities. So often, you know, what you know about them, um, they're for leadership, are they loyal, dependable, respected, things mm-hmm. like that? They want to know about socially. Are they reserved and shy? Are they poised? Are they, you know, compatible in groups? Things like that. Yeah. Um, and then there's a whole section um, where they want to know, you know, just on interest and academic organizations, things like that. Because obviously, no matter what kind of group it is, they want to know what's this person bringing. Sure. Are they going to be shining for us in sports are they you know a great dancer like what do they bring to the table yeah and um the process is I mean I don't want to cover anything up as far as like it's a rough process there's a lot of great girls yes and it's it is competitive it is competitive that's the perfect word to use for it it's competitive and that feels like a weird word to apply because everyone thinks that this is only about friendships and friendships is a lot of this but it's also about serving with one another and you know like absolutely way more than just hanging out and as shallow as it sounds it's about maintaining an image Mm -hmm. that sounds ugly to say Mm -hmm. but that image varies so the sorority that I was participating in at western Kentucky Kappa Delta I think a lot of sororities say this but i was so proud we really didn't have like a look yeah like there's often like oh they're all blonde or they're all brunette or we literally had a variety of looks yeah that's unique shapes sizes and I was um I may talk about this later I want to get through a few things but we were actually the first sorority to pledge an African-American on our campus 
in when? 19? It was either 89 or 90. I'm not sure. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty awesome. And that ruffled some feathers for sure. Many feathers. We had, I couldn't even believe like that we had to have some of the discussions we had, but we did. And I don't even want to go into a ton of that because thankfully that's not even really an issue in sororities. I don't think any more on that campus. I don't know how it is on others, but for so long there were, you know, there are exclusively black sororities. Yes. To this day. Yes. Like that's still a, you know, they have their um, own sororities, but the sororities that we had at Western Kentucky. Now this is something that I thought was interesting too. We already had Asian members. Mm-hmm. We already had, um, I think we already had a girl that was from India in our chapter. So I just thought, why was that? I mean, all of a sudden we've ruffled feathers and we've had other color. So that's fascinating. Anyhow, um, I digress. (laughs) The process. Um, So you send in all this paperwork and the members who are already active members are there earlier Then the rush process starts with tons of prep. Yes. I'm not going into all of that because that's not relevant here. But um, so they're already on campus preparing. So they're looking at these photos, looking at these applications, seeing like who's coming, who do we know from our school? Who do you know from your school? And that's all starting to kind of buzz, right? Before the week even starts. Um, And in the meantime girls that are incoming freshmen that are moving into camp on into a dormitory on campus you get to move in earlier than any other student that's not going through sorority because of this because you're going to be going through this process and so you you have activities that start earlier so you get to move in earlier and i'm not even kidding that's a a plus. Um, that's a plus for some people to even give it a shot. Like if they're worth, on the fence, that may be worth the fee. If like just I don't so want to get to move, I don't know if I want to do this or not. But if I get to move in early and avoid all of the chaos of move-in day, yeah, sign sure. me up. I'll give it a shot. Um, you get assigned a what what they call rush counselor, and that's we called them rokai. We called them rokai. Yeah. Okay, so they everything was Greek. <laughs> that's right. They've kind of laid down their affiliation for the. Time being. Yes, but they are affiliated. They with, are affiliated they have to with be a, in a sorority, sorority yeah. um, but they don't reveal which one. And they truly try to be bipartisan on, yeah. like, you know, helping their girls through the week. I felt like mine was. Uh, yeah, I for did sure. too. I still remember <laughs> mine. It was so awesome. Kelly Neal was my <laughs> Rokai. And I can't even tell you how excited I was when I found out that she was the representative of the sorority I had chosen because oh, I loved cool. her so much. That's she was fun. like, you know, gold to me. So I felt like I made the right decision. <laughs> Anyhow, um, all of this is bringing back floods of memories. <laughs> so, but it is in some ways um, a little bit gross how you have to sell yourself. I'm yeah. just being honest. Yeah. Like the whole um because it is a the sorority's trying to sell themselves the girls <laughs> trying to sell themselves it's like speed dating it's it really is because the there's several rounds and that first round it's is fast fast in fact i want to say that the first round i met 10 or 12 sororities and i think we were with each one for five minutes i'm not even kidding and so we you know, it was just door after door that we were opening up because we were in like a panhellenic building that was several stories high. Mm-hmm. And so imagine just this, this stairwell that's all open with just girls buzzing all and... the way around. Yes. So it was so loud in wow. that hallway. And yeah, and they're all lined up to a different door that they're about to go in and just figure out do I want to be with these girls the rest of my college years or not you know it almost sickens me now that I'm out of it knowing some of the best girls that are maybe more introverted or more whatever that Mm -hmm. didn't necessarily come across on that day as extraordinary that you missed it yeah Um, but 
that also points to do you believe in like people land your, where they're supposed to land with yeah, the people they're supposed to land your with steps are divinely ordered You're do you right. believe you know like you know that's true yeah that's true um but i'm just voicing that because i know that sometimes it's like you know the one that maybe smiled the largest got the bid and yeah. that's kind of yeah. too bad that yeah. there's great girls that fall through the cracks oh, and there's I'm not sure. even another way to say it than fall through the cracks because there's a matching that's happening yeah. where you know you may have put down a sorority as your number two and they had you as their number one and like it fell through yeah did you know that happens where they yeah. may have had you as number one but you had somebody else's number one right and that's, so it wasn't well, a match that's basically how my story unfolded so, so I like... went through rush r- recruitment and I, I got all the way down, you know, and you kind of get eliminated even as you early. Go, if right? you, if you're fall through the cracks early, then, mm-hmm. you know, you don't continue on. And so I had gotten far, if you will, in the process. And so I was down to whatever that meeting time was that you come out of and you pick your top three preference. Okay. Is the ne- is the where you're picking? This. Okay, so I don't remember how many I had to start with. Uh huh. You know, I know today UT has thirteen sororities on campus. So, um, you know, I was down to my three. Okay. And my Rokai called me on a Saturday morning and was like, "Can you meet me at the Chick Fil A?" And I got there, and she was just sitting there with a box of Kleenex. <laughs> and I was like, this can't be good. <laughs> oh, no. And you were a legacy to Kappa Delta. Meaning? That I had a, I, you a, have a sister, a mother, or a grandmother who's a member. Yeah. So, yeah. So she sat me down and she said, I have never seen what happened to you. I've never seen this happen. And I was like, what? And she said, your top three picks... Um. Like, all three of those weren't the three that, or weren't, weren't, didn't match the one that wanted you, I guess is how that was. So, I mean, I literally fell through the crack. Yeah. So, there was a group that wanted you, but you didn't have them on your your sheet. And so, yeah. And I was like, what? I didn't even know that that was possible because I'm a legacy. I -hmm. thought for sure I was going to be at Kappa Delta. So, anyway, somehow I was an anomaly. But... I mean, it's totally, in hindsight, the friend group that I came out with, a lot of them wouldn't have, sor- well, most of them weren't in sororities. One or two actually were and then weren't very participatory, which okay. is why they had time to hang out Yes, with other people. But you wouldn't have met those awesome girls if you had been in yeah. Greek life. Hopefully you would have met some other ones. But yeah. Yeah. if your steps are divinely ordered, which you, we believe they are. Yeah. You landed where you were supposed to be. Yeah. So I fell out of the bottom. And so the closest that I came to Panhellenic was writing a story for the school newspaper when Chi Omega turned 100 years old on campus. I went oh, and covered funny. that story. I That's remember. That's hilarious. Um, so yeah. So I didn't, you know, go, Do the... f- go forward and pledge a sorority because I couldn't right and i don't think you get another shot do you yeah you could you do okay yeah. so you can go through your sophomore year too yeah okay. or it, or and then junior and then senior i mean you oh. could now there is they're less likely to take an older one because they <laughs> want like, you for four years you not been picked? <laughs> well and they want you for four years so if they yeah. love you and you're just a sophomore come yeah. on yeah. you know um, but I actually had a really good friend who will remain nameless right now, but um, just because I didn't ask her if I could share the story. But she went through her freshman year and didn't get chosen. Mm-hmm. And I met her in the dorm yes. that year. So then once I was an active member and she had other friends who were active members, it was easy for her to get a bid because we loved her. Mm-hmm. Um, same for the African American girl that we pledged. It was really fun because we loved this girl. You mm-hmm. know, she had been friends to several of us um, before going through Rush. She didn't go through as a freshman, but just based on it had never been done before. Yeah, it turned out it was a big deal. Like, yeah. and we thought it was. I mean, I 
can't share all of the dialogue that happened, but I'll just tell you it was fascinating wow. because there was things said like, well, we'd rather have her than some white dud. Like we love her. Wow. <laughs> so why would we, right. what does it matter? Like yeah. we want the good girl exactly. and this is the one. That's so so good. anyway, um, it's kind of hard to believe that was in 1989 or 90. It really but, is. Um, well, but like I said, I mean, these, a lot of these schools that we're talking about are hundreds of years old. Right. Hundreds. UT was founded in 1794. Yeah. And a lot of the sororities and fraternities are hundreds of years old. Yeah. So they have bylaws and, you know, things that are set up as to, it wouldn't have included that race. Like, yeah, I don't think there was anything about that in there. But I did look up why Greek. Why, okay. why Greek affiliations? So go there. So at the time of these hundreds of year old institutions being um, put in place, basically there were students that, you know, they're, they're moving into adulthood. They're wanting to find others like them. None of this is new. We're all still wanting right? to find others like us when Community. we get on campus. Yeah. Um, seeking to learn from others but and so they they were kind of already starting to naturally gravitate into groups right people that are like you that you enjoy being around and so the 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 clubness if you will was already just naturally happening from a social perspective but they chose greek as their letters to represent them because at the time this would have been like mostly late 1700s i'm talking Ancient Greek was widely seen as even more prestigious of, of a language than Latin. Interesting. I okay. don't remember this. I probably knew this at one time, but wow. Okay. And so if Latin was for like the schoolboys, I mean, okay. you, only the schoolboys would know Latin. But if we're Greek, then we're even like a new level of prestige. And enlightenment, yeah. probably. And so that's why they Interesting. really associated themselves. Yeah names that were greek wow okay and there's a whole greek alphabet yeah and so these organizations are letters of that alphabet so you're gonna hear alpha chi omega or delta gamma or yes. <laughs> that kind of thing yeah. that's the and they'll have like a seal right uh-huh i actually when i was scrolling through some of the websites preparing for this I mean, I recognize and your seal. And you don't seal. learn what that is until you go through initiation. And they tell you what each thing means, and you're not supposed to talk about it. Yeah. You so find out all the secrets so at we initiation. Don't, we don't get those details from Lainey today. <laughs> but um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, just because it's what you hear all the time, is I don't want to pay for my friends. Yes. You ever heard that? I've heard it time oh, and time you were again. Greek. Yeah, I don't pay for my friends. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> the reason that rubs me wrong is we all do. Yeah. Whether you think you're doing that or not. Right. Are you paying to join the country club that you go to yeah. or the yeah, place where actually, you golf? We're actually still put paying for friends even today. Are you a part of said book club that required you to go buy the book? Right. Like, <laughs> or, I mean, fill in the blank. If you hung out at the bar, did you just sit there and you didn't buy anything? Right. Like, you're paying in some form or fashion. So, for some reason, that's rubbed me wrong when people say that. Because I'm like, anything you're a part of, there's cost. Yeah. And in something like this, there's a lot of planned activity. A lot of planned activity. And it's it's holistic. A lot of it includes your living quarters, as part of, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking, I guess we're talking really more application time period, but you know, even just to continue to pour money into right. being associated with a fraternity or sorority. It's, yeah, you can just be, there's some schools where you're just a member. You're not, there's no house or anything. You're just literally paying dues for mm -hmm. activity. Some of them include a house where if you live in that house, you're paying to live in that house. Now, I don't know how it is at different schools I know they often are looking at what's the cost of the dorm and they're building the fee around right that yeah like keeping it very similar yeah now my sorority experience was much more modest than many that I'm seeing now well I where there's chefs is. and you have all your meals 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, tell them what you're allergic to and what you're not eating, and they're cooking for you. None of that was I happening at the house. Kappa Delta house. I remember your house mom. She was an old lady that she lived there. She was an there. old lady. So at least there was no boys allowed upstairs in the bedrooms and all that, and that she would have known about that because people would tell her things. <laughs> but she was at an age where... There was things going on she didn't know about. Yeah. Meaning it alcohol like, in rooms. Yeah. We weren't supposed to have alcohol in our rooms, but it was happening, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, when I was at UT, there were not sorority homes. They just had a shared floor, floor in a dormitory. Door. Yeah. You know? I remember so that. So you would even see stickers on the windows of all of the, you know, unified letters, Greek Kappa, letters. Kappa of Gamma that floor. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But since then, yes, they have moved into some extremely posh wow. residences that are just on the side, just on the edge of campus, really. And yeah, I think they've got their own Walmart now. And wow. it's just... And they have chefs in these homes that are doing the meals. And also, I, I can't even tell you the pricing on all that. I'm not sure how all of that works, but wow. Well, it's hilarious to think that I think this rumor went around to multiple campuses across the United States probably I certainly was in Tennessee but we were always told that there were no sorority houses on campus at UT um, because there was a Tennessee law that was written that a large number of women residing in the same cohabitating in the same residence would be considered a A brothel brothel? that is not true okay totally a wives tale totally a a wives tale yes um just miss it. Obviously, I've heard it because you. I finished your sentence. Yeah. Wow. So that's not true. That's but hilarious. That's what we all believed too when we were there. Well, I want to say some of the good parts of being in a sorority because I had such a great experience, and I'm not saying it's for everybody. Yeah. I think for some people, it's going to pull away from your studies. I think it's going to pull away from professional organizations that you might be a part of, mm-hmm. perhaps. But for me, it was a really good experience. Now, I do think it took more time than I should have let it. Like, that was my choice. I was allowing it to take more time. I didn't have to go to every single thing (laughs) that I went to. Right. But I feel like it really stretched me to do some things that I probably wouldn't have done. Agree. And... You know, they really want well-rounded girls. So we require that we were required to be a part of two other organizations outside of it. That's a lot. And I even was the person over that, like yeah. making sure everybody was okay. in two other organizations okay. and even given recommendation if they didn't know. I don't know what I want to do. Oh. Try this. And I you're think the you connector. Be good that. So that worked for you. So that was fun. Um, I, th- I felt like it was good for me to have somebody watching my grades. Yeah, you can um, if you don't meet the grade standard for the sorority, they put you on probation. Wow. And you can't get initiated if you're a freshman. You have you're called a holdover because you have to get your grades up before you can be initiated. Okay. Um, But it was good for me to have that kind of push to keep my grades up. Yeah. Um, They have even what was called a standards board. What's that? Which is fascinating to me. At least our sorority did. Um, There was alumna and a couple of members who were made up the standards board. And if you, if there was things that went on where there was too much drinking or rumors of things (laughs) with boys or whatever, you got called to standards. Ooh. And you had to sit across from them and tell your story and they could give recommendation of what you needed to do, which might mean you don't get to go to the next couple of dances or wow, it was a big deal. I can't imagine how difficult this is now with social media, right? Because the whole new world, the news that you're talking about had to travel just from word of mouth or from some no sharing photos of it. Um, I never got called to standard. Good for you, Lainey. But, um, I did, partake of alcohol more than I should have at that time in my life and so I think it was good for me to be scared of yeah going to standards yes. like that was just a good thing for that me that was something hanging over you that was yeah they had rules of even um at that time I think more people smoked than they do now maybe yes. girls still do I don't know but anyway you had to be sitting down legs crossed roof over your head 
if you were having a cigarette. That cracks me up. And you could not drink beer. You could not drink alcohol from a bottle. It had to be in a cup. So when you mentioned the solo cup, I'm like, oh, the solo cup. The solo Those cup. were always around because you could not drink from the bottle. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. That, to some people, I know some chins just hit the floor. <laughs> Um, I don't know what those rules are still, but that was to be a lady. Yeah. That was, you know, there's just protocols yeah. of things you do and you don't do in public. Yeah. So, um, anyway. That's hilarious. Those were good things for me to have, like, even having alumna around yeah. was good for me to, I don't know. I just thought that was a good thing. Well, I was much younger watching you go through it, but I really saw you thrive in it i just you know you were really flourishing in all the things that you were putting your hands to i felt like your creative juices were flowing you guys did like skits and just artistic things that there's a lot of direction you could go yeah if you're artsy we've got something for you to do if you're into politics we got something for you to do if you're super smart if you're a beauty queen like there's a place for you to shine yeah all the things i did the dance stuff the dance and tug of war like it was just fun to participate and get stretched in different ways yeah but even with leadership I I thought it was interesting like I mentioned I was the person who made sure you were in two other Mm -hmm. organizations um there was ways for you as a young person to learn some leadership be that that you were an officer in the sorority maybe you were the rush, the rush chairman that was yeah. putting on all the, you know, organizing yeah. these skits and who's doing the dance and who's doing the props. And so there was just ways that you could. And this is the first time you're doing this as an 18, 19 year old, not under your parents. Old. Yeah. You know, yeah. where they're not pushing you to yeah. do it. Now there's other organizations on campus that you could get this exact same leadership. I'm not saying it's the only way right. I'm watching Freya at Indiana university in her business organizations and she's getting pushed to do some things but yeah you know there's different paths but this was mine and we should mention also there are social clubs and interest clubs on campus that also use even greek letters yes to represent their name right that aren't that aren't the social ones as much as the business ones. yes exactly so i'm not saying this is the only way to get leadership qualities but it certainly did help me find mine yeah um, yeah, and I would say it's a beautiful thing because we said we're coming at this from two different vantage points. It's a beautiful thing to see that we both came out of college with some really amazing girlfriends. Yes. And One, so it just proves two different that paths. it can be done through Absolutely. a sorority route or it could be done through a non-sorority route. Yeah. But and I will had say. Your own, y'all have your own things. Yeah. You know, photos that you like to take every year or words that are funny to you. So it's basically like your own sorority. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, though, I had to find something. Yeah. Like I went and checked out Young Life and Campus Crusade and another great path, you know, and even just getting to know people on my dorm floor. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had to go seek something because friendships weren't just happening just with people I was in class with necessarily. Right. So there did there, especially as a freshman, maybe by junior, senior, if you've been in classes a lot, yeah. you're more bonded. Yeah. But not as a freshman. Yeah. Well, I was going to go more into the actual process, but I'm not sure. Do you think that's needed? I mean, this is, I would just say the pa- lot, so. the parties, they do get more formal as yeah. you go. Like yeah. it starts just kind of getting to know you and it gets later into a more formal kind of direction where they yeah. want to know who you like, you want to know who they like and that kind of thing. Um, even with the clothes that you wear, yeah, it goes from wardrobe. more casual to more formal. So yeah. there's clothing needed to yeah. go through this process um yeah there's so many things I could say it's very organized though like I think even when I went you mentioned like you know meeting all these people quickly mm-hmm. you may feel like just some random person came up and said oh, hello no. and then this other random they were one assigned to find me they know who to come yeah you, you know who you're going to and yeah. after Claudia finishes Amy you go yeah it's that kind of a thing yeah where it's very organized even yeah. though it feels like everybody's just coming to say hello. <laughs> oh hey <laughs> figure seeing you here yeah that's yeah. great well I hope this gives shed some light on 
what recruitment might entail. I mean, like you said, there's a whole lot more. But... And different schools are different. Um, yeah, it's a lot to cover in one episode. But I would just say there's good and difficult in the process. Yeah. And... Yeah, I mean, there may be some real hurt feelings. So, I mean, make sure that you feel like you're really supposed to go for this. That's and not right. maybe put yourself in such a vulnerable position to if be If you're not down. ready. I mean, yeah. I actually had pain around when you didn't get a bid. Because I wanted you to have my stuff and come to your initiation Lady and all of that. Standing so, outside ready to fight somebody. <laughs> I was pretty ticked about that bid not happening. But late, it didn't even take me very long to see, like, I'm not sure that would have been the right path for Laura Beth. Like, yeah. she's doing snowboarding and yeah. doing all these things you wouldn't have time to do it's true. if you were involved in had to be at meetings dressed up That's in pantyhose true. which I know people don't wear pantyhose anymore but we had to wear hose to our meetings so anyway <laughs> I love it well we don't have a sorority or fraternity to offer you but like we said we have a Facebook group <laughs> <laughs> you can find community with us whether you're Greek or not we do have some really fun conversations going on over there so um hope you guys will check that out and yeah it's if been- you have any specific questions about recruitment you're welcome to reach out to us yeah um I'll or if forward- you need a Kappa Delta rec <laughs> let me know <laughs> I'll forward that right on to Lainey <laughs> Okay, well, peace be with you. And also with y'all. Bye.